Hi, TDF fans. I'm Elizabeth Teeter. I play Lydia Dietz in Beetlejuice the Musical. And hi, TDF fans. I'm Leslie Rodriguez Fritzer, and I play Delia, her stepmom. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, Elizabeth. Hi, how are you doing? Hi. I'm good. Um, for all of the TDF fans that are watching this, we are both in our respective dressing rooms on our computers at the Marriott Marquis. So my dressing room uh, is pretty bare right now. It has sort of white walls. We're starting to decorate, but it's pretty bare bones right now with some cute, colorful costumes in the back. Yeah, and mine is even more bare than hers. It's just a <laughs> white wall. <laughs> I don't have just a white wall. pictures yet. Um, you know, we're, we're still moving in, but um, yeah, that's our background. Right. Pronouns she, her. <clears throat> yes, pronouns are she, her. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to ask you this question first, Elizabeth. Oh, okay. How well did you know the Tim Burton movie before joining the cast? And were you long, were, were you a longtime fan? Um, I didn't know Beetlejuice too well. I feel like I had been really familiar with some of the other movies like um, Nightmare Before Christmas, Coraline, more of the animation stuff. But um, I had seen the movie a couple times before joining the company and rewatched it, I think, when I was cast or something. And it's very interesting because it's very different than our show. It's similar and different, but um, yeah, yeah. What about you? I was scared of the movie growing up when it came, obviously <laughs> older than you. When it came out, I was like, what is this movie? This is terrifying. I'm yeah. never watching this. And then of course, like one late night on channel 11 or whatever, I'm from Jersey. It came on. It was like, oh, this is fun. But then, like, certain things were really scary. Uh, yeah. Of course, I'm a, a, a Catherine O'Hara fan. So I love her and everything. So, yeah. So I, I did a little yeah. research. But really, like like Elizabeth said, the show is so different than the movie. Mm -hmm. um, maybe better. No. Um, but we love it. It's certainly yeah. um, hilarious. The aesthetic is just like nothing else. Tim Burton aesthetic is sort of just like its own. Nothing genius. else. And so With, it's so cool to have that so in cool. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a big like gothic fan too, so I feel like you know it's cool. Um, I guess I'll, I'll ask this one. Okay. Yes. Uh, Beetlejuice had already posted a closing date when the shutdown hit. How do you feel about the show's resurrection? Thrilled, yeah. thrilled. Um, you know, here's the deal. I think. With our show, I feel like we have nine lives. I, you know, we were out of town in DC and no one thought we'd really make it. And then we did. And then the show became a hit. And so I am not surprised that we have uh, this new Beetlejuice 2.0 with the fabulous Elizabeth Teeter, um, who's been such an incredible addition to our cast. Uh, I, I, we had been hearing rumblings that it was going to happen, but we just didn't really know. And of course, like everything else, we were, you know, the past two years just holding on. So we're so excited. I mean, the, the fans love it. New people will love it. I think it's time for a comedy to our, our show to be back. Um, and yeah, I think uh, I think that that it's going to do really well. And yeah. we have Elizabeth now and we're thrilled. Yeah. No, How, about you? How about you, Elizabeth? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I saw the show um, last preview before you guys opened and I, I thought it was amazing. And then I was actually cast back in 2020. Um, I was in rehearsals for about three days. So it's very weird because it was such a fever dream of getting the show and starting rehearsals and meeting you very briefly and I know. shutting down and going home. And, you know, like you guys, I had heard rumors of it coming back and then it was unsure. And then I didn't know if I was coming back. And so it was, you know, no one knew what was going on. Right. And um, so it sort of feels like um, a weird like ending a chapter, starting a new chapter sort of thing, just because for two years we were so frozen. Um, and I'm just so happy to be here with all of you. She's brilliant. All the fans who've already seen her in the show, she's incredible. And we, honestly, and Elizabeth and I obviously kept in touch. Yeah. Um, and during, not obviously, but we kept in touch. <laughs> because we were so excited for her to come into the company and then everything shut down. And um, But we're back and we're yeah. so that also made it so easy, the people that I was able to keep in contact with, because coming in is overwhelming. So already having familiar faces and support was um, super helpful. So thank you, Leslie. Well, she was ready from day one. We're not worried. <laughs> we were never worried. We're like, oh, she's uh -huh. ready. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> uh, okay. After a two year hiatus, you're in a new theater with new cast members, including Elizabeth. Since you're in rehearsals when the shutdown hit, how has that affected how you're approaching your roles? Um, Do you want to go for I feel like since you've been with Delia so long, I feel like. Yeah. You know, it's a really good question um, because I feel like the pandemic has changed all of us so much. Um, it certainly has affected the way I play Delia in the sense that way I found just naturally without even trying, she's even more vulnerable and more sort of like a, uh, uh, you know, I think even more loving than she even was before. And yeah. and also uh, this time around, I'm not playing Argentina, Miss Argentina anymore, which is a huge change for me and my show. And 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 it really, we have a great edition of Michelle uh, Aravena playing Miss Argentina now. So we have even a bigger, more diverse, incredible group of, of actors that yeah. it's like, it's so much better better I feel like it just feels like it just feels great um that's so generic but uh it's, it, true, it's, not like cliche, but it's so true it is I mean it, it really mm -hmm. is and and it's nice also um to just come back with like fresh eyes and ears hear the words differently the lyrics differently and also to have you know and you can piggyback off of this Elizabeth but to have a new Lydia to to uh, play with in the scenes I always love working with um, new people on stage, understudies, covers, what, and also now having a new principal actress. Uh, she's changed all of us too. So my deal is no different because we have a, a new leading lady. And mm -hmm. so that's really exciting. So that that was a big part of the process, how loving and incredible this cast is. And um, yeah. 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 Um, it's sort of funny because I never really, I didn't get the chance to do the show, um, but I've had like a weird like, sort of relationship with Lydia. I was in the room with her for a few days and then, you know, off and on. Um, so I feel like I can connect to her a lot more. We've all changed over two years. And I think um, a lot of what the show is about is feeling misunderstood, feeling alone, feeling stuck and having to work through that. And I think that has been the two years for everyone. And I mean, especially I know for like my generation, you know, I, I, um, just I graduated high school I started college it was online and like there's so much change going on within you and like life mm -hmm. steps that just don't feel normal and I'm sure a lot of teens and young adults just pe anyone feels that way of feeling the grief of what we've all lost whether that really be someone that's another thing of like the topics oh of losing someone is just a whole new thing we've lost so much we lost so many people and um I was actually thinking about when we do our song together, how we're sort of playing off like negative and positive. And I feel like that's kind of the world we're living in right now of like yeah. having to be a realist, but also really trying to be, be hopeful at the same time. And exactly. And, and you know, you see Lydia um, get through the other side of it, which I think is, is very um, uplifting right now. Um, yeah. Oh so yeah. If that makes sense. I love that. I always say, I can't believe she's so young and starring on Broadway after all of this, like, it's just kind of unbelievable. I, and this I, question, I, I, okay. I know well, you're such a pro. I'm going to say this to you. I'm going to ask you this because this is really, I mean, it's to me too, but Lydia is death obsessed and Delia mm -hmm. is relentlessly optimistic. What's your favorite moment to play together as yeah. these mismatched characters? Um, I don't know if I told you this, but no reason was one of my favorite things like I was mo super excited obviously there's so many exciting numbers in the show but I just could not wait to do this number with you Aww. I just was blown away by you um so genius and funny um but I love it I love when there's such opposing views to play off of and I think what we talked about in rehearsal is um they're both right like they both their points are both super valid and how to look at life so I think that whole um that whole song is just so fun to do. Um, it really is. I don't know if there's like a specific moment in the song, but uh, the whole thing, that sounds generic, but. <laughs> well, I it's just. Like... Go ahead, go ahead, sorry. No, 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 it's just like finding new thing. Every time I feel like we're still finding new things to play with, which is fun. Yeah, Elizabeth doesn't seem to think that, you know, she's a comedic actress. I beg to differ. She has the, <laughs> she has actually made me laugh in the show several times and uh, I love that I love that about her and I, I guess um you know you said so many amazing things and I'll just the the, the only thing I'll say in, is really 
um, I just love being able to play with you and to see how we play off of each other. And it is, we're both right. Both of these characters are right. And Mm -hmm. I, I love the fact that they find a way to really um, come together at the end, you know, and I, I I have never felt Alex has a food delivery. Um, (laughs) I've never, I never felt as strong as I do in this version of the show that Delia really wanted to, to have a daughter and, and, uh, and Lydia is her daughter now. And that's like a big deal. And it's like completing this a little hole in her heart. And I just, this version, I really felt that. And like Elizabeth said, after everything we've been through, it really cemented that for me. Yeah. Yeah. You go. All right. <laughs> Beetlejuice is a musical comedy about the whole being dead thing. What's it like being in a show that explores grief and the afterlife post pandemic? Fingers crossed. Yeah, it's kind of what we we, we touched mm-hmm. on already. Of yeah. just, um, there is just so much grief in the world right now. And as much as it feels, you know, oh, we're doing a comedy with this and that, I think the thing I love most about this show is it touches on a lot of really real and sensitive topics in a way that I think many can relate to while still having that spectacle and comedy. You're not going to come in being depressed, but it, it it is emotional, you know? It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I, they've done some rewriting to some lyrics. We won't spoil it for you uh, because we've gone through a pandemic and this show is about grieving and death um, that are so clever uh, and, and really funny. And when we first read them during a read through and the rehearsal process it was like amazing. Mm-hmm. I think um, also it's a one day at a time, one show at a time for us. We come to work. Mm-hmm. We're so happy to be here. We're so grateful. We're just riding the wave of that without trying to think too far or too, you know, trying to really stay as positive as possible. And yeah. so far it's working. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's made it enjoyable. Exactly. Oh. Do you want me to ask this to you? Yes, ask you? this. Leslie, prior yes. to the shutdown, you played Delia and Miss Argentina. Now that the show has reopened, Michelle Aravana. I realized, I don't know if I'm pronouncing her last name correctly. I think it's Aravena. Um, we'll, Aravena. We'll, ask we'll ask her. She's incredible. We'll Has taken her. over the later role. Um, why the change? You know, um, it was never supposed to be one person that was supposed to play Delia and Miss Argentina through a series of events. That's kind of what happened. I wound up taking over the role uh, last time we did the show. And then coming into this version, it made more sense for the show and for me uh, not to to really do that much anymore. I'm really I really came back going. You know what? Uh, I love playing Delia. Miss Argentina was really fun. That's the first version of the show. The new version of the show is that someone new can play this role. Uh, they can be part of the ensemble and bring a fresh new take to it. And um, for you know the rest of the productions from here on out, you know we'll be mm-hmm. able to find a more you know, to be able to bring more people into the show that can do a lot of different things. And that's really exciting um, from top to bottom. So it, it, it was really kind of perfect. And I'm really happy and we love Michelle and she's amazing. And I can't wait for everyone to see her. Me too. Yeah. All right. Beetlejuice has lots of complex special effect heavy sequences. Can you share your most hilarious onstage mishaps? Well, I haven't been on the stage for the show yet, so to be determined. Um, but. I don't think I have any, but uh, I'm trying to think. On stage mishaps. Well, I fell today, but that was just during rehearsal. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, it just the most hilarious thing is that Alex Brightman, I am the worst. He will make me break. I've, he, I've broken so many times. And I, we're not and I, he's made me break so many times. So that's what I'm going to say. There have been multiple times in the first version of the show where Alex Brightman has made me laugh on stage <laughs> uncontrollably. And so. you just, the thing is, I mean, I haven't even done the show, but just in rehearsals, like you think there's no way he can come up with something else. And then he does. <laughs> it kills me every time. He does. He does. He does. And he will. Effortless, effortlessly. It just comes out. <laughs> it does. It's just, he's. Uh, yeah. All right. Beetlejuice is known for its diehard fans. Um, what are your most memorable audience reactions in life for online fan art and TikToks count? Well, 
I think Elizabeth's going to have a lot of fans really soon. I told you that already. She's so modest and she's so humble. It's unbelievable. I think uh, she's going to start a a big following very soon. So, uh, and I can't wait. It's like one week until you start, we we start performing for for people. Um, For me, it's like all the Argentina posts, uh, you know, um, (laughs) people redoing them. People, I mean, the fan, just the show itself. People love doing TikToks. They just love doing artwork. Uh, it's it's really incredible. Um, I, I I can't pinpoint one thing, but the the people really loved posting any of the Delian Argentina stuff. I mean, they love doing that. But also the artwork. The artwork really it it oh, it's cool. unbelievable. Um, and they're doing this special thing where in this that long alleyway, they're going to feature fans' artwork instead of doing like our photos, which I think yeah. is so cool. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, it like keeps every, especially with the pandemic of being so isolated, you know, ha- not having as much interaction. I feel like that's such a cool way to keep people engaged. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, a big thing with our show, just to say really quick, was the stage door. Obviously, we're still figuring all of that out now uh, as we transition into a knock on wood new spring and summer. Yeah. COVID free, hopefully. Um, and, and, you know, our fans mean a lot to us because they made our show what it is as successful as it is. They, they're mm-hmm. the ones that, that are really responsible for that. Um, just the show exploding from the album to the TikToks to everything. So yeah, we're hoping that down the line, you know, we can do hopefully those things. Oh yeah. Yeah. We can meet people and we know how mm-hmm. special that is. So uh, hopefully knock on wood, we yeah. can do that. At some point. It's exciting. Yeah. Ooh, what's the best deal you ever got at the TKTS booth? Many. <laughs> Ooh, we How, love what's yours? Um, I don't know what you think. I can't remember what show. Um, recently, um, in January, I, I went to see a lot. Um, and, you know, I got those, like, $25, $35 tickets. Like, I'm terrible. I love to see shows, but I will, like, try to pay the least amount. College... You know, you are so young. You're allowed, you know, 20 years old, saving that money, (laughs) getting those groceries. (laughs) True story. I used to work at TKTS in the booth outside flyering for other shows when I first moved here. So I used to work doing that, you know, when people would be on the line and ask, Uh I've been going to the TKTS booth since I was a kid because I grew up here. Uh So, uh, you have to take it any other way. I don't think at I least have, recently don't go to, I didn't, I just don't go to the box office. I just go, what's, what's happening yeah, tonight? What's going on? And I mean, it, it's, I've been doing it for so many years. I can't even pinpoint one show. Maybe Sideman was one of my favorite experiences, one of my favorite plays, but, um, I, well, years, years. And my family's been going to, to the, to the booth and it's oh, like, like, and I used to work there. <laughs> Some of my, some of them is my favorite shows that I've seen, you know, we're like standing room. You know what I mean? Like you don't I have know. to have oh them. Oh my God. See, like I saw a couple standing room and I was, you know, weeping and I didn't I care. Saw, I, was I saw, oh my God. I saw, um, not uh, called shuffle along standing room. Unbelievable. Yeah. If you don't mind standing, it's easy. You get the whole experience. I don't mind standing. You know? I think I, I don't I, mind standing. I don't mind being in the last row. I'll go. <laughs> Come to our show in the last row. <laughs> Listen, even the last row in our theater, we've looked is kind of amazing. There's yeah. no bad seat. There's no, no bad seat. even on the sides. Even on the sides, it feels I'm it feels so really happy. close. Like when we were, when we were. I feel like when we first got on stage, we were like, this feels very intimate and, and small, but like not in a bad way. No, like right? it actually feels better. And we loved the Winter Garden so much, but mm-hmm. we arrived exactly where it was meant to be. Yeah, everything, everything happens. Well, last question I'm gonna ask you if you had Beetlejuice's power to do pretty much anything, oh my god, what oh. role would you magically oh. cast your co star in? Oh, uh oh, um, oh, gosh, oh my god, well, this is so hard. I would say. I'm so bad at like thinking of shows off the top of my head. I feel like I'm the worst musical theater person because I can't. Like, I, I'm, I'm I'm so bad. I forget I'm, sometimes I'm the world. Thinking, but um, I mean, this is love it. We, you know, we've talked about this. But okay, this is so weird. Todd. Because I was thinking you as um the girl, the Joanna. Yes, oh, we could do That's Joanna. What I was going to say, Joanna. Joanna, this is love it and Sweeney Todd. Whatever the production, wherever the that's going to happen. 
let's put it in the universe <laughs> for us to do it together. Oh my That's God. So maybe we should just, maybe I should just do a concert at some point this summer. We should sing some of that stuff. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. Wow. Well, everything else was just blanking in my mind. I'm sure there are many other things I could think of because she's so versatile. Oh my God. Uh, you could do Glass Menagerie, which you've already done. Didn't you do Glass Menagerie already? I, yeah, this summer. This past yep. summer. Um, That's another one. Yeah. And you got nominated for an award. I won the award. You won? <laughs> On Monday. <laughs> oh my God. I, I probably was reading that without my glasses. Oh, you it's won? okay. Yeah, it was, um, oh, it was, um, yeah, the St. Louis Theater Circle Awards. It was really cool. Um, we did, um, the Glass Menagerie at, so Tennessee Williams grew up in St. Louis. So we did the production. They built a stage outside of the apartment that he lived in and wrote the play in. So like we, we got to use the fire escapes that he wrote on and like all of this cool, like I'm like a big history nerd. So I thought it was the coolest thing. Um, it was one of my favorite roles that I got to do. So yeah. 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 Elizabeth's pretty talented. She's going to be a big star. Oh. <laughs> well, this was fun. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That's what Thank you said. TDF fans. And we are so excited to come see our show. Please come see the show. We can't wait to have you here. <laughs> wait, I pointed the wrong way. I went like this, but it was opposite. Her. Her. Leslie. See her. Leslie. See Leslie. If you haven't already, come see it again. Come see it again. Uh, come see it again and again. Great new people, yeah. especially her. <laughs> oh. And great new ensemble members too. We have new. Oh, we have a lot of new ensemble, which is so cool. It's so exciting. Um, Michelle, exciting. everyone, everybody. All right, thank you guys. Thank you so much. I love you, Leslie. I'll see I you love soon. you too, Elizabeth. I'll see you down the hall. <laughs>